The great Amazon River of South America is so deep and so wide that the people of Brazil call it the River Sea. River steamers go up the Amazon a thousand miles into the heart of Brazil and at certain seasons travel 2,300 miles into Peru. The Amazon River is the only highway through the rainforests of Brazil. Near its mouth, we may see small sailboats. But upriver, the most common means of transportation is the dugout canoe. The Amazon's main tributaries drain the highlands and valleys of Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and Brazil. There are three great waterfront cities on the river, Iquitos in Peru, Manaus in the heart of Brazil, and Belém at the mouth. There are no roads through the jungle, but seaplanes provide taxi service between river ports, and a quick trip can be made from Iquitos to Manaus. En route, the plane makes a stop at Leticia on a narrow strip of Colombia which extends down to the Amazon. Here the plane is refueled by means of hand pumps, a long and tiring job. Baggage is loaded, and the plane is ready to take on a few passengers. Even at this point, 2,000 miles from its mouth, the Amazon is a mighty river. It is the largest river in the world, as far as volume of water is concerned. From the air, we see the river weaving through the jungle. In this part of the country, an annual rainfall of 90 inches keeps the forest green and swells the tributaries that pour into the main channel of the Amazon. As we approach Manaus, we see two rivers flowing side by side. The clear dark water is the Negro River and the brown water is the Amazon. A short boat trip from Manaus takes us to the junction of the two great rivers where the difference in the color of the water may be seen. The two rivers run side by side for several miles before they merge. Where the waters meet, there are dangerous whirlpools. Gradually, the dark blue waters of the Negro will be lost in the silt-laden Amazon. The city of Manaus, just northwest of where the two rivers meet, is on the Rio Negro, or Black River, and hemmed in on every side by jungle. From the map, the location of Manaus is clearly seen. It is in the center of northern Brazil, just north of the Amazon River. Manaus is the capital of Amazonas, the largest of Brazil's 20 states. The beautiful city of Manaus was built during a rubber boom. Unlike most boom towns, Manaus was built to endure. Stone, tiles, and marble were brought from Europe and up the Amazon River for a thousand miles. Buses and cars are seen on the wide streets of the city, but there are no bridges over the river and no highways through the surrounding rainforests. The rubber boom is over, but Manaus is still an important city and increasingly busy as trade center and capital of the state. Many Amazon people have pets, not cats and dogs, but trained animals and birds from the jungle. This brilliantly feathered macaw is the mascot of the Hotel Amazonas. Small green parrots can be taught to talk. Monkeys are favorites with the Amazon children. These pets are often the most spoiled members of the family. This monkey has only just been caught and didn't seem pleased about becoming a pampered pet. In 1912, at the height of the rubber boom, Manaus millionaires built this $10 million opera house. The front pavement is done in a mosaic pattern in small tiles like the sidewalks of Lisbon. Opera stars were paid $1,000 a night to sing here. There are still avea, or rubber trees, in the jungle near Manaus, and rubber is one of the exports of the Amazon rainforest. The dead bark is scraped away from the trunk of the tree. With a sharp tool hooked at the end, the worker cuts a long sloping groove in the tree. A cup is placed at the base of the cut. From the incision, 
raw rubber called at this stage latex, slowly oozes from the tree, runs down the groove and into the cup. Later, the latex is wound on a stick as it hardens over a smoky fire and formed into large soft balls. This is rubber awaiting shipment on the docks at Manaus. This road, flanked by stalls, leads to a big open building close to the river highway, the market of Manaus. Produce of all kinds is offered for sale, bananas and melons. Part of Manaus is a floating city with houses and shops built on rafts. Here, water levels may change as much as 30 feet according to runoff from upper regions of the Rio Negro. This part of the city has floating sidewalks instead of streets. It is interesting to look at the faces of the people who live in the Amazon basin. Most of them are descendants of Portuguese immigrants, the first of whom came to Brazil in 1531, settled down and married Indian women. These people of mixed descent are called caboclos. Several million Negroes were brought from Africa during the rubber boom to work as laborers and the blood of Indian Portuguese and African is well mixed. River boats tie up alongside warehouses which occupy choice riverfront lots in the floating city. This man sells bread to people in passing boats and floating houses. When trading is completed and merchants have exchanged their loads of hides, rubber, nuts or fruit, for such necessities as matches, cloth, kerosene, and salt, the boats prepare to leave. They all join together and, for a few cents, hitch a ride with a larger motorboat. Small boats have no means of locomotion other than paddles or the Amazon sail. This is called an Amazon train and is a familiar sight on the river. All along the river, people make their homes on boats. The central part of the boat is covered for protection from weather and for sleeping. In the stern, the woman does the cooking and washing. The meal will probably consist of fish baked over coals and farinha, a coarse flour made from manioc roots. Mission boats make frequent trips along the Amazon and its tributaries. Several religious faiths are represented in the missionaries who work among the river people. To these people, the mission boat is a welcome sight. The boat anchors in a quiet cove and the crew comes ashore to set up a medical center with a few simple remedies. People come in from surrounding areas by canoe, bringing their children for consultation and treatment by the medical missionary. Through an interpreter, the young doctor questions his patients and offers his advice. Boats of the Brazilian government's health service make periodic visits to plantations up and down the Amazon. Simple tests are made, temperatures are taken and remedies prescribed. The faces of the people reflect their faith in the medical missionary. The shores of the Amazon's tributaries are the habitat of many birds. Along the banks of the river may be found fruit and berries for their food. Some of the birds of the tropical forest are brightly colored. Many birds, animals, and insects live in the jungle, but the Amazon basin is thinly populated, and there is only about one person to every two square miles. In the economy of Brazil, the Amazon is most important as a trade route. Freighters from many foreign countries tie up at the floating docks at Manaus. Passengers can make the trip in these modern river boats. Because of the changing river levels at certain seasons of the year, the docks at Manaus are floating. An overhead tramway, built in rubber boom days, is still in operation. By this means, goods are transported from the floating dock to the warehouse on the shore. To make the trip from ship to shore, gasoline drums and other heavy cargo are loaded onto flat bottom boats or barges.
Then there are river boats, which furnish rather irregular freight and passenger service up and down the Amazon highway. The Aki de Bom is at Manaus, loading for a trip down river. The freight boat soon leaves the main channel and heads up one of the Amazon's many tributaries. Note the high water and the banana plants growing on the banks. With a little sharp maneuvering, the Aki de Bom pulls into shore. A line is tossed ashore and tied to the most convenient thing in sight, in this case, a large banana plant. Soon the stevedores are loading jute a fibrous bark that will be used in making burlap, sacking, and twine. Alligator hides are brought in for trading. Alligators are plentiful along many tributaries of the Amazon. A little further downriver, scales are taken ashore to weigh the jute bundles before they are loaded. Payment is made to the growers in the form of coffee, tea, rice, sugar, and other necessities. As we travel downstream, we see that houses along the shore are larger, and there is more open land suitable for farming. Cattle are raised to supply the necessary meat and milk for food. There are about 2,000 known species of fish in the Amazon. Large river fish are filleted and dried in the sun. Freshwater shrimps in abundance offer a change in menu. Along the river, a lively trade is done in jungle animals. The capybara, largest rodent in the world, weighs 100 pounds full grown. It lives partly on land and partly in the river. This is a young tapir. The tapir makes its home in a thick forest near the river. It is the largest animal of the Amazon, weighing up to 700 pounds, and is a relative of the elephant. Some animals are brought from the forest to be sold to zoo collectors. The sloth lives an upside-down existence in the deepest jungle and is not at home on the docks. The Amazon River empties into the Atlantic Ocean on the northeast coast of South America, about 100 miles south of the equator. The principal trade port of the Amazon is Belém, which is situated on a southern channel of the river. As we fly over Belém, we see the docks, which extend along the waterfront, the stopping place for ships headed upriver or on their way to the open sea. Here, ocean freighters load up with products of the Amazon basin, Brazil and Barbasu nuts, the hardwoods of the rainforest, rubber, snake skins, and alligator hides. Supplies coming into Belém and needed for the rapidly growing population include rice, flour, sugar, and many manufactured articles. Large cranes are needed to handle cargo in the modern and busy port of Belém. For every freighter, there are many small trading boats in Belém Harbor. Most of their cargo and supplies are moved by manpower. The trading boats have been doing business in Belém for 300 years. These boats have changed little in design. The boatmen resemble the people we saw upriver. They are descendants of the Indians and early white settlers. Produce from the entire Amazon Valley comes to Belém, most of it brought in small boats. Here they're unloading oranges and the purple-green pineapples which grow so well in the Amazon basin. Because of the lack of refrigeration, meat is dried or smoked. Instead of a market basket, this shopper balances a large tray on his head. With Belém's population of 265,000, the market is a busy place where people of many nationalities meet and mingle, Portuguese, Indians, and Orientals. Not far away, along the shaded streets of the city, 
is Belem's first skyscraper, a 26-story terraced apartment house with a fine view of the river. North of Belem, the delta of the Amazon stretches for 207 miles, thickly studded with islands. Marajo, the largest island, has an area greater than that of Switzerland. Belem is situated on a channel of the Amazon called the Rio Pará, or the Pará River. Through three main channels and a score of smaller ones, the Amazon River empties into the Atlantic Ocean at the rate of 60 billion gallons an hour. 3,000 miles of rainforest extend to the delta, where the rainfall is over 100 inches annually. The mighty river pours into the Atlantic Ocean with such volume that its silt may be seen 100 miles from shore. This, then, is the Amazon River, the river which the people of Brazil call the River Sea.